No, that's a wonderful PAO talk uh, from, from certainly one of the experts. And uh, I remember, he doesn't may remember, I remember meeting ATN with Dr. Millis here in Vail about 10 years ago. So exciting to have him back. Uh, our next uh, speaker is uh, from Japan, uh, well known to uh, many of us. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Soshi Yoshida uh, has a lot of experience with um, uh, arthroscopy in these uh, subset of these dysplastic patients. And he's gonna discuss his uh, insights and technique on endoscopic shelf acetabuloplasty uh, with uh, surgical techniques and clinical outcomes. Dr. Yoshida. Uh, thank you so much, for Dr. Mark Philbon and Smith and Nephew for having me in the Delhi Symposium. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, endoscopic shelf acetabuloplasty for treating developmental dysplasia of the hips and surgical technique and outcomes. My, de my <coughs> department is located in the southwest part of Japan and the Wakamatsu Hospital University of Occupational Environmental Health Japan. Uh, is uh, currently approved by ISA course as a teaching center. If you have a chance to come to visit to Japan, uh, please let, let me know, okay? Here's the disclosure. A patient with <coughs> dysplastic hips have a high fre frequency of the intraocular pathology. The patient with DDH typically present with uh, growing pain, C sign, which is associated with a high incidence of intraarticular pathology, including labrum tear with cartilage damage. And in addition, many patients with DDH also present with lateral hip pain due to chronic fatigue overload of, of periarticular myotendinitis structures such as iliotibial band. So hip arthroscopy was not a generally accepted tool for treating DDH. However, there are several studies looking at <coughs> good clinical outcomes and lower reoperation rate. However, the, post, uh, the recent studies reveal that the poor clinical outcome after hip arthroscopy in the DDH, the, those, those, those studies uh, reveal that the possibility of worse clinical outcomes, high reoperation rate, and the pro progressive arthritis. So we investigate what's a clinical and radiographic projector for worsen clinical outcomes after hip arthroscopy. This study summarizes the most important projector for poor clinical outcomes are broken central line, patient with broken central lines, uh, which is the uh, instability of the femoral head, and the femoral neck shaft angle more than 140 degrees and the severe cartilage damage and the lateral setup edge angle less than 19 degrees and the BMI over 23. So the, the hip arthroscopy is generally a beneficial treatment for the FAI and the <coughs> center, center edge angle less than 20 degrees and the moderate and the severe dysplastic hips is a good candidate for the PAO and the RAO. So borderline dysplastic hips, lateral center edge angle 20 to 25 degrees, uh, the follow into gray zone between the hip arthroscopy, hip arthroscopy and uh, <coughs> conventional osteotomies. But uh, some patients with uh, DDH, uh, such as a high level competitive athlete, borderline dysplastic hips uh, is not a good candidate for the PAO or RAO. So we consider the shelf acetabuloplasty is a good candidate for the, between the, the, the patient, uh, patient between the PAO and uh, hip arthroscopies. So shelf acetabulo, traditional shelf acetabuloplasty provides wider weight-bearing surface by placing the cortical cancerous autograft on the anterior, as, anterior superior aspect. There is a several studies looking at long-term clinical studies demonstrating the shelf acetabuloplasty to be the long-lasting good clinical outcomes. However, the shelf acetabuloplasty long-term clinical outcomes are affected by the presence of labrum tears. If the patient with labrum tears is not good clinical outcomes. So we need to evaluate labrum tear prior to the osteotomy or acetabuloplasty. The concept of endoscopic shelf acetabuloplasty consists of uh, 
addressing the shallow socket and the labrum tear and the cam impingement. Because the patient with DDH uh, has a, uh, as, especially the athlete is a sort of huge cam regions, the, the, the cam dynamic impingement problems. So we, we have to address uh, shallow socket and labrum tears and cam impingement. So we divide it, device the endoscopic shell cell prostates. So we're gonna show you a little bit uh, briefly uh, <coughs> surgical techniques. Scope into the <coughs> intraarticular intra space and intraarticular variations. And if label tears observed, label suture anchors fixation was observed, uh, performed. And if dynamic impingement test uh, observed, uh, <coughs> dynamic impingement was observed, femoral osteoplasty was also performed. And finally, capsular closure was performed. And then after switch scope to the extra articular space and the fluoroscopy. And then uh, we <coughs> divided uh, the iliac crest uh, along with the uh, uh, anterior superior aspect of the acetabulum. And the two 2.4 millimeter guide wires were placed through the dorid guide along with the capsule. And the osteotome along with the capsule guided wires to the make the slot. And the free bone plate, uh, was, which was ha harvested from ipsilateral iliac crest, <coughs> measuring 3 centimeters, about 2.5 centimeters. And inserted the bone shell into the slot, uh, placed the position, uh, placed the graft into the position by press fittings. So the power and pitfalls of preoperatory imaging is uh, very important. And preserve the labrum and the capsular closures is also important to, to restore the stabilized stabi stabilize joint. And don't deflate completely deflected head of the rectus femoris because reflected, reflected femoris is also important to support the uh, capsular, capsular stabilizations. And confirm the location, the angle of insertion of the iliac uh, shell graft and the fluoroscopy visualization. And if the graft can be too high, which can lead to bone resorption, and or too low, which can create the load bearing the problems. So here's a case presentation. 18 years old female speed skaters uh, presented with 18 months history of the right hip pains, limited range of 19 degrees of the flexion, and center edge angle 16 degrees. And this movie shows uh, the surgical procedure. You can see the anterior superior labrum tears. Uh, we address between the capsule and the <coughs> capsule and the labrum. This patient actually the AIIS impingement as well. So they compress the AIIS impingement. We place the suture anchor and fix the mattress suture and last loop technique to the secure fixations. And after uh, repair the labrum, release the traction, and uh, dynamic uh, dynamic impingement test was performed. This patient actually the dynamic dynamic impingement was observed. Chemotherapy was also performed. And then uh, scope <coughs> viewing from underwater portal, and pre uh, we established the proximal middle under portal and. <coughs> We use the ultra, ultra blades, uh, six, six ultra blades to complete the capsule closures. And we switch the scope to the outside the capsule and divide the <coughs> outside the tissue of the capsule for the optimal visualizations. And we identify the reflected head of the femoris and a little bit divided to address uh, uh, making a making a slot shelf slot. Uh, we place a 2.4 millimeter guide wires, the parallel and the fluoroscopy visualization. Uh, we put the slot uh, osteotome along with the guide wire to make the slot. And then we harvested the 
uh, graft and make the uh, wedge shape and skewer, uh, skewer using the traditional wire like a barbecue and then uh, place, the, place the graft in the position by press fitting without any, any metal fixations. Uh, this uh, post operative x ray shows uh, improved the center edge angle. And uh, this patient can start uh, learning uh, up three months after surgery without any discomfort. And six months after surgery, she can start the uh, speed skate activities. This second case is a challenging, a little bit challenging case. 22 male professional rugby football players uh, with DDH and large bone cyst at, at the acetabulums, right hip pain persists in the nine years. Of, so X-ray shows a bo large bone cyst and the lateral center edge angle four degrees and the anterior center edge angle minus ten, five degrees. Large bone cyst is located to the anterior superior aspect of the acetabulums and also AIIS type three overhang of AIIS that can lead to uh, extra articular impingement. MR shows the ex extensive level of tears. So we developed a surgical technique with tectoplasty, the vertical cortical flaps to open open window uh, vertical cortical flaps to address the bone cyst. So he, he, this movie shows the surgical techniques, uh, extensive lab tears of, observed, and uh, the, the DPS labrums and the uh, camo self plastic was performed, and the capsule application, complete capsule applications also performed. And then uh, scope switched to the outside of the capsule and divided a little bit reflected head of the femoris and we make the slot, a transverse slot to hold the shelf graft and also vertical, vertical <coughs> slot for addressing the, here you can see the bone cyst uh, in the cavities divided the bone cavity entirely and put the cancerous chips, pack the cancerous chips into the cavity. After packing the, the capsule, uh, cancer cap, uh, uh, bone, uh, place the graft in the position by press fittings. Here you can see the post-operative x-ray shows the uh, improved uh, center edge angle and the and the bone cyst is uh, diminished. And uh, he can return to preterial activity level at nine months after surgeries. So here is, you can show, I can show the clinical outcome following endoscopic shell for acetabulplasty for treating athlete with DDH. A 98 patient who underwent endoscopic shell for acetabulplasty between 20, uh, 2011 and 2012. And 34 patients met inclusion criteria. Two patients were lost follow-up. 32 patients were enrolled in this study. 94% pass, uh, follow-up rate. At the minimum, two years follow-up. Uh, modified heart hip score from 67.4 preoperatively to, to improved uh, 95 at final follow-up. And return to sports, and 90% can return to sports, and uh, three patient, uh, three patient cannot uh, about ten percent cannot to return to sports because of the progressive osteoarthritis. This is a case. This is a case. Case a catastrophic failure of fifty years old flight attendants, a female, uh, with uh, three three years history of the left hip left hip pains. You can see the. Uh, Cartridge, severe cartilage damage. And uh, we performed the self astabroplasty. However, the, uh, six months after surgery, progressive osteoarthritis and converted to THA. So we realized uh, the patient with severe cartilage damage is not a good candidate for the self astabroplasty. 
In conclusions, a clinical radiographic project of worsen clinical outcome hip arthroscopy is broken central line and femoral neck shaped angle over 140 degrees and severe cartilage damage at the time of surgery. Endoscopic shelf plus is less invasive and provides favorable clinical outcomes for the athlete with DDH. Uh, it is also useful for treating DDH athlete with large system. Thank you for your kind attention.